Hello everyone, it is October 14, 2022, time's about 0730 CDT and it is Geo Rant time, Geo Rant number 183. And I'm really surprised no one has asked me about that flag back there yet. <laughs> but anyway, try to keep this short and simple. It's about plate tectonics. I notice a lot of earth science people get this wrong too. Just because you have subduction and rifting on a planet and there's evidence of that does not mean plate tectonics. Those are not synonyms for plate tectonics. You can get subduction and rifting in a non-plate tectonic setting. There's something called lid tectonics, which I suggest you look up if you can. And that's one of the competing theories that maybe Earth in its early life had something like that. Venus may have something like that. And Venus may actually be an analog for an Archean and Hadean Earth. Earth did not always have plate tectonics. And I see Earth scientists get that wrong too, that awesome series how North America was built a few years ago. Oh, it might even be 10 years of now. They actually talk about plate tectonics as if it goes back 4 billion plus years, and it do, it didn't. We know. It did not. Only the really old timers who don't really have a stake in the game anymore just say it has. And you can't just extrapolate things back into the past because you want to. We see a lot of evidence, especially in greenstone belts in North America and stuff like that, that the early earth lost its internal heat in a way that was not like plate tectonics. And I don't mean the first 50 million years. I'm talking the first 2 billion years for at least that first billion, unquestionably. Then the next billion, some people say it did. Some people say it didn't. I say it didn't. I think the transition fully came into effect about two and a half billion years ago. So about 2 billion years after earth's formation. Now, there are certain things you need for plate tectonics to occur, all right? Now, this is book, this textbook's called Tectonics, but it's, it's about plate tectonics. It does, you know, go over some uh, other planetary tectonics at the end. Earth is the only planet in the solar system where we know plate tectonics occurs. And tectonics, you know, if you've just taken an entry-level class and given a con concept of it, see, that's the thing with a lot of these conceptual models. We get them from somewhere. We don't just pull them out of our backside. But if you don't understand the science behind it, you might just arbitrarily, casually use it. You know, you might have a concept of the model, but you don't understand how it works. And that, that's fine. You don't need that in everyday life. But you see, plate tectonics is not an easy thing to comprehend. There's a lot of complex maths in this, right? Just like there is with structural geology and geophysics, okay? But in order to have plate tectonics, well, we know Earth is the only planet in the solar system that has it. And Earth is also the largest body, rocky body in the solar system, which I'll come back to later that we know of. All right, and when I say rocky, I mean solid surface. This includes ice, because when ice is brittly cold, it acts, or when ice is really, really cold, it acts more like brittle rock. All right, so anyway, in order to have plate tectonics, you first need, well, plates, okay? You need plates with well-defined boundaries with which Earth has, and that right there eliminates, if somebody wants to say, well, or, well all these places have these planets have one plate no there's no discernible boundary so you need at least two but if you have two you're probably going to have at least three it's just the nature of things and that's something else when these plates move about the globe they follow what's called an euler pulse kind of like the axis of a plate if you will kind of like you know earth's axis except they move you know they can move as the plate moves and gets consumed and all this stuff they're not as rigid as earth's North Pole is and, or, and South Pole, that axis, okay? So you need those. And why does that happen? Because in order to have plate tectonics, you need a rigid lithosphere that's a crust and very upper mantle. That has to be rigid. It has to be able to act as a solid body as it gets subducted. Yes, I know ductal deformation occurs in erogenies and stuff like that, but overall, plates are rigid. All right, that's why they're so large. That's why we only have about 12 large ones. And I'm not gonna get into microplates, subplates, and all that other stuff. These are not talks for here. Also, what you need in order for plate tectonics to occur is you need, uh, wait, so what did I cover? Euler poles, rigid plates, plates. Um, I think I'm just gonna leave it at that for right now. There's other videos where I've gone into this way more depth. I'll link them if I remember to. So. 
just seeing rifting and subduction, like there seems to be some sort of subduction on Venus and rifting, but there's no plates. No plates, no plate tectonics. You can't have the two. And also, continental drift is not a synonym for plate tectonics. As a hypothesis, Wegener's continental drift hypothesis has been rejected. You, In casual speak, you can say, yeah, continental drift, the continent's drifting about the globe, but it is not an act, it is not plate tectonics. The two are completely different. Wegener came this close to a mechanism, but never really hit it. Uh, he really came close, but it's not even just it's not even the same as he describes it right the continents and other people thought this too until plate tectonics came out is that you basically have the ocean crust that mafic crust and the continents kind of sat upon these in a way and one of the working hypotheses or not working but thought of hypothesis was that the oceans with enough could actually move these things that's the concept, okay? That's obviously not how plate tectonics works. The continents are part of that plate with the ocean. And as that oceanic plate, that mafic plate gets subducted, eventually the continents will collide or something will happen and the continents don't get subducted. That's why it has this illusion, if you will, of drifting about the globe. It has to do with, with the densities and nature of the continents compared to the, you know, their felsic generally and generally, the ocean is mafic, generally. And that's a broad definite, you know, broad concept, but basically that is it. Okay, so don't mistake continental drift for plate tectonics either. And I'll see people talking about like Mars and I'll hear them drop plate tectonics. And it's like, what, what, what plates? Can you define these plates? Do they have boundaries? Uh, like I said, one doesn't count, you know? It's like, no, there is evidence of rifts on Mars, but Mars, what happens on Mars, it seems that it lost its internal heat, it would get rifting while the planet isn't gonna get bigger, but instead of getting subduction, you got massive volcanoes that would form and that would alleviate that and then it stopped. Venus seems to be m probably more analog analog uh, uh, analogous to, in, uh, to maybe how Earth used to in the early days. So why? Why does Earth have plate tectonics? I don't know. Could the fact we have a large moon compared to the mass of the Earth have something to do with it? Maybe, but in the early days it didn't happen. I don't think the moon is key for this. Could it be water? Liquid, abundant liquid water on the surface and locked up in hydrous minerals in the upper mantle. It could be. And I think that might be a play a minor part. But what I think is a more important part, because even, you know, we see the oceans on Earth and compared to us, they're massive, but they're like all the water on the planet, even if you take into account the stuff that's thought to be in the mantle and you're really liberal with how much you think is in there, you're looking at 0.05%, I think it is, of the Earth's mass is, is water. So it's still not a lot, you know, because you got this whole planet. I think Earth might be at a minimum size for plate tectonics to happen. And the fact that it didn't happen for the first two billion years, or, you know, working theory that it didn't happen for about the first two billion years, tells us that we had to have that rigid lithosphere before we could get it. Now, larger planets probably could start this process sooner, and they would divide into more plates, and it would probably be an efficient way for them to lose their heat because plate tectonics is a really unusual way for a planet to lose its internal heat it involves lateral movement of the crust subduction in the mantle spreading centers all this stuff based off rigid lithospheres anyway i think that's it for this rant i don't want it to hit 10 minutes if you have any questions or comments please leave them below and i hope you learned something